Bearded dragons brumate naturally in the wild, so naturally they do so in our homes. By the end of this video, you should feel more informed and more comfortable with bearded dragon brumation. Bearded dragons hibernate underground in the winter months of Australia. Being south of the equator means that their seasons are flipped from those of us in the northern hemisphere. So our summers are their winters and our winters are their summers. Bearded dragons do not hibernate in the summer. There are so many myths about bearded dragons hibernating in the summer in the northern hemisphere because they're remembering that it's winter back home. That is not the case. What they're doing is estivating in the summer. So naturally when the summer gets really hot bearded dragons become a little less active and a little more like sedentary. But the key difference is is they are awake and they're not in a true deep hibernation like sleep, like true brumation. So in the wild, the summer is hard, the weather is hot, there is low food availability. So what bearded dragons do is rather than go bask and get really, really hot and then raise their metabolism to needing food that isn't there, they basically just chill out and sit in the shade and they'll go for a bask in the really early hours of the morning, but they're not gonna sit there in the midday basking and getting really hot because it's just not a good idea for survival in summer. So this state of basically becoming very inactive and just staying in the, the shade in the summer and not eating much and not basking much, that's called estivation. And they do this in our homes, in our northern summers too. None of that confusing myth is out of the way, let's talk about true winter brumation. So winter time in Australia in the Bearded Dragons range gets very very cold. They dig deep burrows into the ground to hibernate. Studies on mammals in the area with similar depth burrows indicate their burrows stay around 15 Celsius all winter long and that's 59 Fahrenheit. So Logically, if they've got very similar shaped and depth of burrow as the bearded dragons, the logical jump is that these temperatures are probably the same for the bearded dragon burrows too. However, it's not so black and white. On warm sunny days in the winter, the bearded dragon might emerge and sit like sleepily at the mouth of their burrow, just kind of like bask in the sun, and then they might go down. They might periodically come up and down in that behavior if there's some warm days in the winter and they'll go back into that deep sleep for another few weeks before some random sunny day brings them up to bask again. So it's not truly as black and white as like, I go to sleep for winter and I'll wake up four months later. There's a bit of up and down, but for the most part, they're very inactive and sleeping at the bottom of their burrows. So what I'm going to recommend for brumation is from advice from Beardy Vet and also what I've done from my experience with my own bearded dragons. Again, your individual bearded dragon might have other ideas, not going to stick to the plan, but what we're going to do is provide you with a, a foundation to work from and then you can build upon this foundation and pivot based upon your own individual bearded dragon's behavior. So we're coming at the end of autumn now and temperatures are dropping and our bearded dragons are relatively inactive and temperatures are coming right down and day length is shortening outside and we're thinking right okay we're getting up to brumation time here. What I would do is stick everything normal, have your, your same normal basking spot, your same temperatures, everything. When we get to sort of mid-October, around October 15th, I would say stop feeding. You don't need to feed after this point. What we want to do is from this point onwards, from October 15th until November 1st, we want to give them those two weeks just to digest what you fed them thus far and excrete it out. We want them to completely clear themselves out so they're ready to go into hibernation without any food in their stomachs. On November 1st, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring their daylight period down to eight hours. The reasoning for this and the logic behind this is the way shortening their daylight hours as would happen in nature so that the shorter daylight hours is congruent with like naturally winter day night cycles. So we're starting to gear our bearded dragons to like start slowing down for a winter brumation now. What we're doing is we're keeping temperatures exactly the same. All we're doing is reducing day period and we're not feeding. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get to November 15th and we're going to reduce the day period down to six hours. Now the reasoning for this is that with this shorter period of heating at night the temperatures are going to be far, far cooler because it's in the winter and because we're heating the vivarium for shorter periods it's going to stay cooler at the colder temperatures of winter for far longer. 
But what we're doing is giving them the same basking spot. So if they want to periodically come up and just bask a little bit and then go back down, they can. And then what we want to do is completely stick with this all the way until we get to February the 15th. On February the 15th, what we're going to do is do the reverse of the way we came in and start bringing them out. So on February the 15th, we want to take our daylight period up to eight hours again. Again, not feeding, we're just keeping and we're just controlling day length. And then we're going to get to March 1st and we're going to take everything back up to 12 hours a day and we're going to be treating them as normal when they're awake. This should all be a nice even dip in into winter and a nice gentle climb out, just like what happen in nature. Again, you might have an individual bearded dragon that wants five more minutes in bed and they might stay like asleep for two more weeks even after you brought everything back up. That's fine. Again, what you want to be looking at is this entire time through brumation, if they're not losing drastic amounts of weight, and what I mean by drastic amounts of weight, if they're losing more than 10% of their total body weight. Realistically, bromating in this way, they shouldn't lose much body weight. So if they're not losing body weight, you're absolutely golden. If they do lose lots of body weight during the middle of bromation, what you can do is just bring your temperatures and everything back, back up and take them out of that bromation-like state and uh, warm them right back up again. Then we can like, assess from there. But realistically, the Bearded Dragons are built for this. They shouldn't be losing much weight during this period whatsoever. Now ideally what we want to do is get air temperatures during this entire winter period down for your bearded dragon, preferably down below 20 degrees or like 68 Fahrenheit. So what I did um, last brumation is I had all the windows open during winter and I just wore extra clothes because it's all in my bedroom. Um, I just wore extra clothes and then like snuggled up with a hot water bowl sort of in bed sort of thing and got through it. Um, but what I did was bring the, the temperature of my room right down and it really helped the bearded dragon like brumate properly. If you can get the room down or wherever you've got it down to like 15 degrees, bang on perfect. But for the most part, you might have a day where you're freezing and you shut the window and your air temperatures in your room rises up to like 20, 21 degrees. And that might might replicate like a warm day in winter for a bearded dragon in the wild. And that's where you might see your bearded dragon wake up and go for a little bit of a bask, but then go back down for a sleep again. That's okay. This same temperature aspect allows for that little sort of like variation but if we can reduce temperatures by doing little things like that i recommend we can obviously if you're freezing completely up to you but i really try to like bring down those air temperatures if you're looking for more be the dragon care guides and care videos about niche aspects of bearded dragon care then look no further this is the channel for you subscribe for the ones that are coming and i tell you a lot more are coming and i'll see you in the next video